वेलकम बैक लेट एस लुक एट वन मोर एक्सरसाइज बिफोर आई लीव द फील्ड ओपन टू यू लेट एस लुक एट एक्सरसाइज डी जीरो थ्री वी हैव ए थर्मली इंसुलेटेड सिलेंडर क्लोज एट बोथ हेंड्स दैट मीन्स वी हैव ए रिजिड बॉक्स and it is fitted with a leak proof frictionless diathermic piston which divides the cylinder into two parts it is leak proof so whatever is in on one side of the piston cannot move to the other side and vice versa it's a diathermic piston so it will maintain the temperatures of the two sub systems on either side equal the two parts are known as a and b initially the piston is clamped in the center so the volume of the two parts are the same initially 1 liter as well as 1 liter v1a and v1b and the states of one side and other side are given air is the fluid notice that the two sides have the same temperature 300 kelvin but there is a pressure difference side a has a pressure of 0.3 megapascal side b has a pressure of 0.1 megapascal the piston is released now when the piston is released it will try to move towards the low pressure side so side a will increase its volume side b will decrease its volume and after some time when equilibrium is again established it's leak proof frictionless piston so pressure would be the same on either side it's a diathermic piston so temperature would be the same on either side and let's compute now the final pressure and the final temperature and also the change in entropy which irreversible process has taken place that's a question i am leaving open to you i'll just hint at the way this problem is going to be solved and i will illustrate here that it will always be a good idea to list the unknowns and then if the number of unknowns is say n see to it that we are able to set up n equations to solve for these n unknowns so i am going to illustrate this from that point of view let us sketch our system i'll show the piston by means of a thin partition leak proof and frictionless the whole system is rigid and insulated so the full system is rigid and insulated this is side a this is side b and initially there is a mass m a1 pressure p a1 temperature t a1 and volume v a1 on this side and initially mass m b1 pressure p b1 temperature t b1 and volume v b1 on the other side and all these things are either known or from the equation of state we can determine the volumes are given the temperatures are given the pressures are given so if we assume air to be an ideal gas we can determine pv equals rt assume some molecular weight of air say 29 kilogram per kilo mole and you are through you can determine ma1 and mb1 now let us list out the parameters in the final state the final state let the mass on the two sides be ma2 and mb2 let the pressures be pa2 and pb2 let the temperatures be 
T A 2 and T B 2 and let the volumes be V A 2 and V B 2. Notice that there are 8 unknowns. Now, which are the 8 equations that we need to obtain or we need to set up? Let us look at those equations. First, although A plus B together is a closed system, because the piston is leak proof, mass on side A remains unchanged, mass on side B remains unchanged. So, one equation would be M A 2 is M A 1. Similarly, M B 2 is M B 1 two equations. Then well we have assumed air to be an ideal gas. So, even the final state will satisfy P V equals M R T. So, we will have P A 2 V A 2 is M A 2 R T A 2 and in a similar fashion P B 2 V B 2 equals M B 2 R T B 2. Two more equations. Then we are given that the piston is frictionless. Since it is frictionless, the pressures on either side would become equal when it finally reaches its stable position. So, that means we have one equation which says P A 2 is P P 2, okay. 5 equations. Then we are told that the piston is diathermic. So, it will not tolerate any temperature differences on either side and hence we will have T A 2 equal to T B 2, 6 equations. We need 2 more and which are the 2 more? One is the full system is rigid. Consequently, the volumes of the individual subsystems may change. V A may undergo a change, V B may undergo a change, but the total volume remains unchanged. So, we will have the final volume of the system equals initial volume of the system. So, we will have V A 2 plus V B 2 equals V A 1 plus V B 1. So, these are 7 equations, we need one more and that will be the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics would be Q equals delta E plus W. Now, first we are given that the complete system to which we are applying this is an insulated system. That means, it is an adiabatic system and that is why this will be 0. Why? Because it is an insulated system. Now, what about W? W will be expansion work plus other work because the system is rigid expansion work is 0 because the system is rigid. What about the other work? Let us assume it to be 0 and that means we can get rid of this W term. That gives us delta E equals 0 and if we write this as delta u plus delta e other, then delta u can be related to temperature, but let us assume again that delta e other is 0 and then the first law reduces only to this part. The change in the thermal energy of the system does not change through the process and delta u 
equals 0 means delta u a plus delta u b is 0. And delta u a is related to its final temperature and initial temperature, delta u b is related to its final temperature and initial temperature. Since the initial temperatures are the same, the final temperatures are also the same, we can write a simple expression for this. In fact, the general expression would be m a C V, I am using the same C V and making a minor assumption that let us assume C V to be constant, then delta U A will be T A 2 minus T A 1 plus M B C V T B 2 minus T B 1 is 0. Okay. Now, I have just used M A and M B here, actually they are you could use M A 1 or M B 1, but since M A 1 and M B 1 are the same thing as M A 2 and M B 2, you could use either here 1 or you can put 2 there, does not matter. This is the 8th equation. So, this is equation number 8 that gives us 8 equations and 8 unknowns. That gives us the complete final state. And once you get the complete final state, the change in entropy of the system will be determined at change in entropy of system part A plus change in entropy of the system part B. And since we know the initial and final state of part A, we can determine delta S A and similarly we can determine delta S B compute delta S A, compute delta S B, sum them up you will get delta S of the system. Since the system is an insulated system and actually the way we have assumed that it is an isolated system, delta S system itself will become delta S universe and that would be the amount of entropy produced that should be greater than 0. Check this out for yourself. Thank you.